Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. My name is Sean Dexter. My name is Sean Dexter. And I welcome you back to the Mango Grove for your daily, daily Bitcoin analysis video. And hey, we'll perhaps even cover Zilliqa in this video. We did get more than a few requests for it. I have with me Krisha. Krisha, say your highs. And what's up, you guys? Krisha, it's a brand new week. And hey, everything's red, 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 red. What are your thoughts? Well, it's bearish. We lost the cloud, the weekly cloud that I've been eyeing now for I don't know how many months. Um, we've lost it. We closed underneath the cloud, so that was the first tell in that we're likely to come down and test the next sort of a level, right? Guys, that's actually the first thing she said to me when she woke up this morning. We lost the cloud. We lost the cloud. <sighs> <laughs> and hey, I have the dashboard opened up over here, Krisha, on the two-day time frame, and the two-day is saying we flip neutral. It kind of does make sense. We've been consolidating, right? Pretty much going sideways on the mid time frames, the two day time frame, three day, even the daily, you could say, is not really lost a major level just yet. Yes, it's looking bearish. We've bounced, however, since those dips into that 9,000 region yet again. And, um, well, the dashboard saying, no reason to be in a trade until Bitcoin makes a decision. However, I do want to spend some time looking through all the time frames on the dashboard today and perhaps give you guys my thoughts on how I use it because I do think it will be a little bit beneficial for those of you who do have the premium version of the dashboard, right? Where you have access to all the time frames. So first, let's start with the four hour time frame, Krisha. And um, we can see that, okay, so the four hour time frame saying that we were given a short signal at um, six hours ago, actually, and your return since then is around 0.18%. But that's considering the fact that Bitcoin has already bounced around more than $200, right? So if you're taking the trade at um, when the dashboard actually gave the signal on the four hour time frame, which was six hours ago, you would have had more um, profits to play with, right? If you close at the right position or right place. So how do you know when to close? Well, now we can go ahead and look at the 12 hour time frame. The 12 hour says, hey, your short signal was actually given three days ago. Okay, cool. So if you had taken the trade back, then your return since then was 1.43. But again, we've bounced all the way since then. Okay, so the four hours saying short, the 12 hours saying short, what's the daily saying? Daily saying short too, three days ago. Okay, so I think it probably was given um, the signal around the same time the 12 hour was given. Okay, there was an overlap over there. Now we already look at the two day, the two day saying neutral, but now let's look at the four day time frame. Ooh, the four day saying long. Okay, so all the mid time frames, right? The lower and the mid time frames are saying short and neutral. The four day, which is where we start entering the longer term territory time frames, is saying long. Okay, that's where we can look for our support plays, right? That's where you'd be looking for buys on the four day time frame. So that's how I like to look at it, guys. If the four hours saying, hey, short the 12 hours saying short then i'll be looking towards the four day in the weekly to say is the four day in a, in a bull trend is the four day still giving me long is the weekly giving me long um signals at that scenario i'll be looking at the four day chart and i'll be looking to see hey am i under support over here where can i find support that's where i'll be looking to close my short trade you, you understand what i'm saying kusha Yes. Right. So the four hour gives me, um, right yeah, exactly. So just just to give you guys an idea of how I like to play this, the four hour, the twelve hour will give me um, these quick plays towards the downside. But where do you close? Because the four day is telling you we are still long, right? So then you close at your four hour, four day levels, your four day support levels, or rather your weekly support levels if you want to be even safer. Now that's just how I play it, guys. None of this is financial advice, and yeah, this is just my thoughts to help you guys out. You can take. Take it and do what you want with it, but none of this is financial advice. Please be um, cautious, trade safely, trade the stress-free way, the mango way. All right, so with that, Kusha, let's go on and um, look at the, um, well, the charts, right? We can start with the weekly time frame. I, yeah, actually, I do have the weekly time frame opened up right over here. And what do you know, Kusha? Guess where we bounced? on weekly support. The weekly key June coming in right around that um, 8,900 mark. We have the 10 SME as well. I would consider that a test, right? Like it does seem like we missed it by just a few dollars, but think about it. We are looking at the weekly time frame over here. So you can't get too nitpicky with these kind of things. What are your thoughts of this weekly key June, Krisha, bouncing right off it? Yeah, no, as in, uh, I mean, it is a major, major level, right? Um, the last time the impetus to us actually, um, you know, actually getting that downtrend all the way down to 3K was not just losing the cloud. The cloud was the first one, but we also lost the Kijun. Yep, yep, 
exactly. right? And that um, that was it was like a it was like a a gift. It was yeah. telling you that yeah. hey, you know, chances are I'm going down further. It gave you a bounce, but um, that was the first level that it broke. But yeah. what's different in this case is that we actually got supported. Exactly. Not the cohesion. So, guys, this is another example of what we were just talking about, actually, on in regards to the dashboard, right? You can look at the four hour on the dashboard saying, hey, you know what? It got a short signal around 9,350-ish this morning. And then you look at your weekly time frame that's saying, hey, it's still saying you buy the dip. It's saying long. Then you come in, look at your major weekly level. It's occasion right over here. Your tennis may come in right over there. That's a good area to perhaps wanting to take some profits, right? Again, Kusha. This is not financial advice. That's just how I um, like to do it. What are your thoughts? No, I I agree with you. I think it's a yeah. it's an interesting picture right now. Let's what what made it easy the last time was that while losing the I don't know there was just so many levels that were taken out here. It's more like a sandwich now. Exactly. It's like your sandwich in range, right? Yeah, so, so let's go ahead and turn on that Ichimoku right over here just to um, show you guys what Krisha was talking about. Right over there, we closed underneath the cloud and made our way down towards the Kijun, right? So when you have the dashboard aligning with the um, weekly close saying, hey, you know what? We may have a short-term play towards the Kijun over here where we may see some support. Hey, that's that's a good uh, good play to, to be taking. Now, I didn't take that play. I'm just, you know, I got, mo I got um, a few questions on this this morning. So just trying to explain it to all of you, my mindset on how I would like to look at this. So, Krisha, do you think we're going to close into the cloud over here and perhaps see that eventual edge to edge play to 11,000? Or is this the end? Are you leaning towards further downside? Perhaps a move all the way down to Tenkin, making Joe Bear very, very happy. That's her name now, guys. <laughs> Joe Bear. Jojo, the official perma. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the time she switches bullish is going to be the time that, you know, watch out, guys. Watch, yeah, watch out. out. Bitcoin is doing something. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's it, I th it's odd. It's odd. I mean, you, everyone knows that I've been following the cloud. Okay, so right now, my picture from bullish has flipped neutral. I cannot be bearish entirely, not until we lose those wick lows. I, I think it's around 8,600. Yes. I'm looking for 8,600 to be taken out in order for me to actually switch my um, my picture on Bitcoin. And that's when I'll actually switch to bearish. All right. So we have not taken that out yet. So that's something to know. So I am in a more neutral sort of zone right now. Cool. So let's go ahead and look at the 40 time frame now. That's another one of those higher time frames. And hey, the 40 is pretty much sitting within a pretty clean range, right? I have the Ichimoku turned on at the moment, but I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to just uh, mark out uh, or rather name the horizontals that I'm looking at, Krisha. 10,000-ish, 10,010. And towards the bottom, I'm looking at around 8,500-ish. Did I get that right though? Do, should I adjust this? Let me adjust this a little bit. Um, no, nope, that's, that's pretty good actually. That's pretty good right over here. Yeah. So yeah, around 8,400-ish is what I'm looking at. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the mango ribbon and see if we have anything coming into confluence with that. So it does look like we are living underneath the tennis me at the moment, but we have an entire day and 14 hours to salvage that. I don't know if we will, I don't know if we will. If we do lose that, well, the obvious test is the 21 EMA on the four hour time frame, and it does look like we've already pretty much come down there. I don't know if we actually do give it an official test and bounce again. If we do come down there again, I think we may come down further, Kusha. Perhaps, perhaps um, test those lows at around 8,600-ish. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that right over here. What are your thoughts on the 4-day? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And also look at the, how the 10 SMA is sort of sloping down, right? We've sort of tapered, up, tapered off. Um, we tapered off um, in the last four-day yeah. candle, and yeah. now we're kind of sloping down. Right now, this is looking very droopy yeah. in terms of price action. And I do believe that symmetrical triangle that everyone was looking at actually did break to the downside now, if you kind of just look at it. Yep. So um, I do believe that this droopy sort of price action is marks the break. Now, yeah. of course, we'll have to sort of go and plot that in, but um, this is looking weak, and it just looks like yeah. it wants to make way down further. At the very least, I'll be looking for um, the cloud, maybe a move to the cloud um, at around that 8.4k region. Ooh, okay, so that horizontal I, that I just did adjust lines up with that um, bottom of the cloud. So yeah, Krisha, I, I, I think that's a good way of looking at it, right? That 10 SMA over there would pretty much mark the um, the break of the 10 SMA on the 4-day time frame would be a confirmation of a potential symmetrical triangle of the 4-day time frame breaking towards the downside. And then we'll, we could look for further continuation, perhaps, perhaps the 4-hour, so I meant to say the 4-day 10 coming in at 8,132. 
Mm-hmm. But I'd be looking yeah, for a move, Kisha, all the way down to the 4 day 200 moving average, 4 day Kijun eventually, 7,150 ish. I think if we if we start closing candles underneath 8.6k, I'll be looking for um yeah about 7.1k, even possibly even 6.9k. Yep, I agree with you there. So what was our first clue? If you do remember, a few days ago, rather more than a week ago, on the two day time frame, turn on your Ichimoku Kusha. It was this Kumo twist, right? That was making me say, hey. This thing, you don't want to bet against it. You don't want to bet against it. Even though we were being, we were following a system, um, this was the one big glaring sign for us, right? The Kumo twist, we were like, okay, Bitcoin's sitting at around 10,000, 10,100 at the moment, but we are sitting against major weekly resistance and the Kumo twist is right over there. Hey, one plus one does equal two sometimes. And right now, two on the two-day time frame, two-day Ichimoku, has been the governing factor. So if we do lose that two-day tanking, Krisha, the two-day 200 moving average is going to be the last line of defense for me. Once we lose that, I'll be looking for that vacuum pull into that Kumo twist coming in at what? 7,300-ish, Krisha. Oh, perhaps, hell yeah. Perhaps wicking down to the gonna game. I think it's going to be a quick, it's going to be a volatile yeah. move too. It's going to be I think a cease yeah. trade, Krisha, to the Kishu, 7,150-ish. Yes, Lining absolutely. up with our full day, so. It's looking interesting times ahead interesting times ahead I, I you just mentioned a volatile move I'm hoping not I'm really hoping not because what I'm liking right now is that whenever Bitcoin makes these moves it's giving the altcoins even more time to breathe and we're seeing the altcoins not get pushed down further on each of these volatile moves Bitcoin is making towards the downside in fact they have a move but those just end up being buy opportunities for these altcoins to have further continuation towards the upside we're seeing that with Zilliqa right now right we saw Zilliqa come down test this major level over here giving us a really good buy opportunity and then bounce up so I'm hoping that on each leg down, Bitcoin's not so volatile that it just crushes the entire market, but kind of grinds its way down over there. I'm just hoping for that. I, uh, we don't know if yeah, it's going to happen. But but I'm looking at you know historic price action within that range. So as soon as from basically the range of um, 8.7, 8.6K going all the way down to at the very least, Sean, 7.7K. And yeah. so far, it's been a pretty volatile zone. Indeed. But I mean, of course, things can change. But um, if you just sort of kind of have to go based on history i i'll be bracing myself let's put it that way hmm. let's see i do think that we have major levels of support that bitcoin is going to have to crack through one by one each time so we do have key support on the daily time frame coming in at 8400 we have the daily 200 moving average that will also see some support at 8200 so there's going to be a lot of resistance to, to um chew through now i'm not saying that we can't just melt through all of that we are going to be doing something significant as soon as we clear that 8,600 level. The daily um, downtrend will officially be on the table and we'll have officially cleared out all mid time frame level um, uptrends. But, but however, these these uh, major support levels are not to be ignored. Daily Kiju, yeah. daily 200 moving average, top of the cloud, coming in at 8,100, 8,200 region. So I see where you're coming from, but I do think that we may see some stutter stops on the way down over there to 7,150 ish. Yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. All right, so it's um, good to it's good to have two opinions yeah, right on exactly, the table. Exactly, always. exactly, exactly. So that's what that's what the audience wants to hear too, right? That yeah. um, hey, um, so Kisha, I've I've drawn a trend line right now. I'm not sure if you'll be able to mimic it but essentially have it coming in from the wick close of 11th may then going into the candle closes of 25th may and then leading into the break of the tankin on the daily time frame yeah, coming in the of june right so now if you look at it that way you kind of can see this as a symmetrical triangle break towards the downside lining up with the four day symmetrical triangle that we looked at continuation hey what measured move can we get out of this let's go ahead and see if i'm being aggressive on this one Looking at oof, bottom of the cloud, this actually lines up to that 7,200 7, region, Krisha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. There's a good chance that if this See, has continuation, yeah. um, it's actually getting there. Yep, yeah, yeah. So let's see let's see interesting times ahead indeed so that's pretty much it we we've talked about the daily the the two day the four day the weekly and hey we can take one quick look at the monthly and show you guys that once again bitcoin has gotten rejected at that key june major key june on the monthly time frame where's that tank in coming in at 8,500. So we have that to chew through as well, Krisha. 10 resistance on the monthly time frame. It's not going to be 
easy for the Bears by any means. Yeah. So it, it kind of adds to the thesis that we may see Bitcoin kind of trudge its, sorry, grind its way downwards as opposed to simply melting right through like a lot of people are expecting. Bitcoin sure, does sir. do the unexpected, right? And what's the unexpected move right now? Just a slow grind downwards, in my opinion. Yeah, or maybe a one big massive pump to the upside. <laughs> Ooh, I'd love that, but um, need to get out of the altcoins before that happens. So let's see, let's yeah. see. In interesting time. So that's Bitcoin. Kusha, we can go ahead and take a look at Zilliqa quickly, just for the audience. Please. And um, I'm going to switch on over to the real start of the weekly time frame. And oh, we've closed off the weekly key issue. Not bad, not bad at all. The, the, the scandal over here is not the most confidence inspiring by any means but it is kind of expected with such a strong move to the upside coming and seeing a rejection at that 294 satoshi level i'm going to zoom in for you guys right over here right not not unexpected at all guys there you have to be careful against major weekly levels and let's go ahead and now switch on over to the daily time frame see what's going on over here yep got the rejection your big clue was when you took out the subic over here at around 258 it was likely to come down and make its move back down to the next support level which was coming in at 232 satoshi we can switch on over to well first let's see where the 21 ema is coming in at on the 12 hour time frame okay that's all the way down over here sorry this is the daily time frame i do like to look at the 12 hour time frame for my major buy opportunities as i've mentioned to you guys many many times before and what do you know krisha lining up with a major horizontal right over here the 10 kin the 21 ema coming in right there at 235 seeing a bounce thus far can we see continuation kusha you did mention something very very key which was the four hour 10 kin right we're coming in and smacking up right against it kusha the four hour 21 ma the four hour 10 kin is proving to be resistance right now if Zilliqa managed to start closing candles above there at 257 satoshi and above i'll be looking for a move back to the top of the range first at around 281 satoshi and then yes. perhaps all the way to 303 satoshi so zilliqa is showing some life over here i'm looking i'm hoping for a continuation rather however towards the downside hey it's not going to look good if we start closing candles underneath 234 i do think we're going to have a move all the way back down to the 200 moving average at 163 that's what the four are saying at the very least kusha what is the 12 hour saying 12 are saying kijun support at 200 satoshi but we could very well wick down to that 100 and what was it again let me go ahead and pull that up again 163 Ooh. 163 yeah. wick could get volatile if we lose this level Krisha. yeah but no i still think we have 200 208 before we even get down to 163 I think 208 is going to be the key level. That is going to be the weekly level, right? 208. There you go. So let's go ahead and um, mark that out. In there. So, I mean, we could very well. And we closed the weekly well, Sean. Yeah, we did. What so I, I'm, I'm not looking for I'm not looking for a move all the way down to 160-ish, 180-ish. Yeah. I'm looking for this to bounce over here. I'm bullish on Zilliqa. Until we actually lose 232, I won't be looking for 200. And 200 lines up with the Kijun as well, Krisha. So 208, 200. It's nice confluence on the weekly mm. and 12 hour levels but i'm not looking for that just yet we need to close 12 hour candles underneath 232 before i look for that yeah all right so okay. um any anything else you want to add before we wrap this up no that's it i think you've covered all of it <laughs> all right cool my name is sean dexter i hope you guys enjoyed this video have a great week ahead of you until then do the mango way do the stress way do it the easy way ciao ciao guys